Today we're taking a brief look at the Lenovo ThinkStation P520 for use in 2024. Let's start by taking the side panel off and I think some of you might find this somewhat satisfying. I have to say that I really like the design of this PC. One thing that's kind of cool is the inclusion of this tower style CPU cooler. And this version of the P520 came installed with a Intel Xeon W-2125 CPU with four cores and eight threads. I honestly think that you can do a lot with the four core eight thread CPU in 2024. As you can see the 4.0 gigahertz frequency with the 4.5 gigahertz boost speed, I think adds some added value and performance, which we'll see later on. As with many workstation PCs, there's a generous amount of RAM that you can install. In this ThinkStation, we have eight available DIMM slots and currently there's 64 gigabytes of RAM installed. Currently there's four 16 gigabyte Samsung 2666 megahertz DDR4 RAM sticks. And the graphics card that came pre-installed is a Nvidia Quadro P4000. And this card has 8GB of GDDR5 memory. And don't get the wrong impression on the skinny little heatsink. This card is still very capable of doing a lot of work and some casual gaming as we'll see later on in the video. One of the more exciting aspects of this PC is the included power supply. This Delta Electronics power supply is 80 plus platinum certified with 690 watts output. In addition, we have not only one, but two 6-pin to 8-pin PCIe connectors. So that means that we can swap out this Quadro P4000 for something like this RTX 2080 because we have the PCIe cables to accommodate. The power supply is one of the many modular features of this PC case. You just have to pull this lever down and the power supply comes right out. You can see that it's not a conventional design. It connects to the motherboard with this slot here, which means that the PCI cable connections that I just talked about are connected to the motherboard here. So I don't imagine you'd be able to install a regular ATX power supply if you wanted more than 690 watts. Maybe there's something else that was offered by Lenovo if you really need that extra power. And I have Windows 11 Pro installed onto a 512 gigabyte Team Group MP33 NVMe solid state drive. There's two M.2 slots right behind the graphics card here and below this little heat sink. I'm not going to be taking it apart and taking a look right now. I'll save that for the total upgrade video that I'm planning for this PC, so just watch out for that. There's a handy little guide on the inside of the case, which is something I always really appreciate. You don't have to look online or anything. It's basically like having a little tiny manual taped to the inside of a enclosure. There's proper orientation for different amounts of RAM and everything's numbered and labeled, which is great. And over here, you can see that we have a generous amount of expansion slots for PCIe lanes. The main one being the PCIe 3.0 slot that the graphics card is currently loaded into. And I'll go back to this RTX 2080 just because the 20 series NVIDIA cards are PCIe 3.0. That doesn't mean that you can't install something like this RTX 3060 Ti with PCIe 4.0 speeds. It just means that you might want to think about what's appropriate for the system. Beyond that, you can actually see there's six SATA ports, one that's currently occupied by the optical drive, and there's two SATA cables that came pre-installed that were probably meant for these two hard drive bays right here. There's also other things like two USB 3.0 headers and another USB 2.0 header. One nice inclusion for airflow is this 90mm case fan for air intake. And this honeycomb style grill up front will allow for some nice air to be pulled in. And there's also one 90mm air exhaust fan here at the rear. Now I wanted to power on the PC before talking about the front I.O. because looks like we have some light up LEDs showing you where exactly the USB ports are, which is pretty cool. So we have four times USB 3.0 up front, and this looks to be an SD card reader. However, there's just a little plastic cover in here, so I suppose we do not get that feature. And we also have a CD slash DVD RW optical drive if you still have use for such a thing. Onto the rear I.O. the PC case, we have mouse and keyboard PS2 ports, RJ45 Ethernet port, 4 times USB 3.2, 2 times USB 2.0, microphone, headphone, and audio jacks. 
And for display output, we have four times display port 1.4A on the Quadro P4000. So if you're wanting to use something like HDMI, you'll need to source out an adapter. So while this computer is assembled in this current configuration of CPU and GPU, I wanted to demonstrate how well this would work as a video editing and gaming workstation PC. So I decided to try out video encoding with Handbrake and video rendering with DaVinci Resolve 18.6. So let's check out that footage. So next up, we're going to see how well this PC performs while using Handbrake. What I have loaded up is 8 minutes of gameplay footage, and we're going with the preset 1080p60 creator. Let's see how long it takes for Handbrake to process this. The CPU is going to work. We're at 3.9 GHz and 98% usage. And we're barely scratching the surface with the 64 gigs of RAM. According to the logs here, we finished in 4 minutes and 35 seconds. And we'll be seeing this gameplay footage later on in the video. And we've got DaVinci Resolve 18.6 loaded up, and I imported my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage to test how long it takes to render. And just an FYI, using this software does work really well with this system. You shouldn't have any problem with a lot of lag or instability. Okay, the render has started and we're really utilizing that CPU boost clock speed. And it completed in 13 minutes and 45 seconds. That's not too bad for mild productivity, especially for a hobbyist or enthusiast like myself. Here's the video in full 1080p glory. So if you're on a budget, I think it's definitely possible to use Handbrake and DaVinci Resolve. So before we get to the gameplay footage, I think this is all I really wanted to cover for this version of the P520. For a more in-depth look and how to install upgrades, I'll be posting another video probably within another week. So just take a look at my channel and you'll probably be able to find it pretty easily or I'll link to it at the end of this video. Just to give a sneak preview and in case you don't make it to my other video, Here's a couple upgrades that I plan to do. First, we have a Intel Xeon W-2135 CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads to replace the 4 core 8 thread CPU in here. And in place of the Quadro P4000, I'm going to use this RTX 2080 graphics card. I'm thinking that that will give a nice boost for gaming and video editing performance, which is my main goal in reviewing this workstation. Now the PC is all closed up and we're ready to check out the gaming performance. Definitely let me know in the comments if you are using something like this in 2024 or if you put in different upgrades or if you have any recommendations for me or anybody else that's watching this video. I know I certainly did not cover it all and I wish to cover more in my upcoming video. Otherwise, I hope this video was informative and maybe might help you out if you're looking at buying something similar for yourself. So thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.